Hello, my name is Jeffrey Pomerantz, and welcome to our course on metadata. Now, you're already here, so you must already think that the topic of metadata is at least a little bit interesting. But I want to leap right in and try to get you really hooked on why metadata is interesting and important. Now, there's some background that I think we really need to talk about before we can make really good sense about what metadata is and what it's for. And we'll get to that in this unit. But first, I want to show you some examples of metadata so you can see what it does. And you can start to see, I hope, that it's all around us all the time. And you probably don't even realize it most of the time. When metadata is doing its job well, it's just invisible. It fades into the background. And that's as it should be, as I hope you'll see. So for our first example, let's take this video right here, the one that you're watching right now where I'm talking. If we've created this video correctly, there should be a title right down here someplace and a timestamp that says how long the video is. Both of those things are metadata about this video. They're describing the video. They're not the video content itself. They're information about the video. And that seems like a really obvious thing to say, but that description is metadata. Hopefully, also, those pieces of information, those pieces of metadata, tell you something useful about this video. Now, let's go to a hopefully more interesting example. This page, which is a page on the Internet Archive's website, and if you don't know what the Internet Archive is, I don't want to get into that right now, but it's a really interesting project. Among many other things that the Internet Archive does is they partner with libraries around the world and digitize books. And this particular web page is the page about a book that was digitized by my institution, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And the title of this book and why I chose it for this example is that it is called Ways and Byways of Chapel Hill, published 1939. Now, what you get on this page is some fairly standard pieces of metadata that are used to describe books, right? Obviously, title and publication date, those are important when you're describing a book. Uh, you also get the author and publisher, author and publisher. Um, call number. Call number is particularly important in a physical library because you need to be able to find the book on the shelf. This is a call number in the digital collection, of course. Let me scroll down a little bit. And you get some other pieces of metadata about this book that are a little bit more non-standard about books. You get things like the name of the scanner, the kind of camera that was used in the scanner that digitized this book, the date, the identifier, which is the same as the URL up at the top of the page here. It is the address on the web of this particular book's entry on the Internet Archive site. Right? These are all descriptive of this digitized book, but they're kind of non-standard pieces of metadata when talking about books. All right, let's look at another example this video on YouTube. Now, this is a video that was sort of the latest viral video as of a couple of weeks ago at the time that I'm making this video. It is uh, the song Space Oddity 
performed by Commander Chris Hadfield on board the International Space Station. Now, um, if Commander Hadfield, you're watching this, or anyone from NASA is watching this, thank you very much. This is a terrific video, and clearly lots of other people think so too, because it's gotten 16,000, almost 17,000 views. Which gets me to the metadata about this video, right? Obviously, this is the video content itself, but below that, we get a great deal of metadata. We get the title, we get, whoop, we get the creator of the video, we get the date on which that video was uploaded, we get some description of the video, and we get things like category information, license information. We get comments down at the bottom by other YouTube users, and we get related videos on the side panel there. Now, all of those things are metadata on the YouTube page about that video. They're not the video of Commander Hadfield performing Space Oddity. They're information about that video videos that are like it in some way, what other users think of it, a narrative description, right? They're descriptive of the video. And what's more interesting is you get a couple of different kinds of metadata. You get metadata that's created by the creator or uploader of the video, in particular this narrative description, right? Commander Hadfield could have written anything in there, but that just happens to be what he did write. That text could be anything. You get things like category and license, which are selected from a fairly small list of possible options. If you've ever uploaded a video to YouTube, you know that there are 10 or a dozen, maybe, different categories that you can choose from but those were selected by the creator of the video. Now, you get some metadata that is created by other people. You get the user comments. Right? Those are pieces of metadata created by other people entirely, not the creator of the video, but someone else. And then you get some pieces of metadata that are created automatically by YouTube's system, right? Related videos. YouTube has some algorithm that, according to whatever criteria it uses, says these videos are like this other video, right? So we have three different kinds of metadata here. We get metadata created by the creator of the video content that could say anything at all, the description. We get metadata created by the creator of the video, selected from a narrow list of possible options. We get metadata created by other people completely, and then we get metadata created by a computer algorithm. So actually that's four kinds of metadata, there you go. So I've just shown you three different types of objects about which metadata has been created. This video right here, Commander Hadfield's video, and a book. And there are different types of metadata created by different types of processes. Now, what you may have noticed is that a couple of things are in common across all three. Title and author or creator, right? Those are very common, and date of creation. Some of the most obvious things you might want to say to describe an object. And then you have metadata that's a little bit more specific. Duration, for example, is specific to video content. It wouldn't make sense for a book, for example. For a book, you might say page count, and that wouldn't make sense for video. Right? So you get description of an object that's specific to the type of object we're talking about. 
So with these three examples, we have a pretty good diversity of kinds of metadata and processes by which they're created. And we'll talk about the metadata that's involved in a wide variety of different tools and technologies, some of which you probably use every day or almost every day over the course of this course. And as the course progresses, I'll be bringing in some guest speakers who are working on interesting things around metadata and to talk about some of the you know, cutting edge developments in those areas. Now, one last thing that I want to say before we move on. I am not going to assume that you have any background in information science at all. I'm not going to assume that you have any background in managing information or anything like that. Maybe you do have, and that's great. You may want to watch this week's videos on one and a half speed and kind of breeze through them. I would ask you to pitch in on the discussion forums if you have information and information management background. But if you don't, welcome. I'm really talking to you. This course is really for you. I'm going to conduct this course on the assumption that you're completely new to the topic of metadata. In order to really get what metadata is and what it's for, I really think that we need to think through a little bit what information is and what information is for. Now, of course, I'm saying this from the perspective of somebody who's in a school of information science and who studies this professionally, so obviously that's my bias, but what I want to do at, towards the end of this unit is back up a little bit to address some of the larger kind of philosophical background issues about information and work our way back up to metadata. But that will come later at the end of this unit. So for now, let's move on and talk more about metadata.